Chaos is everywhere. Warlords terrorize innocent civilians, giant monsters roam the land, and an all-powerful superhero with a god complex keeps an entire country obedient through fear. For all those problems, there are the Jawbreakers. They're a team of five superheroes working as soldiers of fortune, and no task is too big for them to solve. No matter where they're needed, they'll find a way to outmaneuver and overcome anything and there will likely be lots of explosions and carnage along the way. Jawbreakers is a comic written by Richard C. Meyer, who runs the YouTube channel Diversity in Comics, where he reviews comics and gives opinions on the state of the comic industry. He launched a successful crowdfunding campaign to publish this comic, and a buddy of mine loaned it for me to read. However, just because one reviews comics doesn't mean they understand how to create a comic. Oh, that reminds me, I need to add Flying Mermaids to the novel I'm writing. Now, I will fully admit I am not that well versed in the world of comics, and I'm sure there are things that went right over my head, but I do know storytelling, and this story is a bit of a mess. There's also a very lengthy controversy that the author and this title were involved in, but honestly I didn't keep up with it, and I don't plan on discussing it. I'm just here to review a comic and hope that Linkara can forgive me for stepping on his turf. First and foremost, there are the characters, and I did like the little cast of heroes. However, I liked them for their banter with each other, rather than their superpowers. As you'll see, the characters in this book have a problem ripping other characters off. Even the logo is ripped from the Expendables. Leading the band is Silkworm, with the power to manifest items into reality. So he's basically Green Lantern, but without a ring. Cavs is a bulletproof strongman, so he's Luke Cage. Hellpriest is a blind religious man, so say hello to Daredevil. At least Hellpriest makes for a decent sniper. Somehow. Knife Hand is a little better, despite how awful his name is. He's a silent ninja, a la Snake Eyes, but with lightsabers for arms. He's forever in mourning because he cannot hug anyone. Devil Dog is the odd man out since I don't know anyone that he's really ripping off, unless you count the Punisher. But he's also the least remarkable member of the group. He has a decent costume and can keep up with the other jawbreakers, but he doesn't seem to have any remarkable powers. He's just a really skilled marine turned mercenary. There's also Kill Switch, who I would hesitate to call a member of the team, since all he does is shuttle the others from place to place. Each of these fighters are likable enough in their own way, like Silkworm trying to keep the team's spirits up while plunging them into danger, or Caps' constant snark. I also like the death tornado that was Knife Hand when he stepped into the middle of an army of enemies. While they don't jump out of the pages at you, and I don't think they leave a lasting impact on you that you'll discuss around the water cooler, they do work just fine within the story's universe. The group dynamics work, with everyone contributing something to the team. However, the team itself doesn't stand out as anything special. It's just another group of badasses fighting various threats with minimal investments in those threats. Even in my very limited experience with comics, I know we've seen this with comics like Youngblood. The problem is, the characters aren't very deep and don't have a chance to stand for anything meaningful. They don't have personal issues to overcome or a nemesis to defeat. The only exception to this is Silkworm in the last book, where his maybe, maybe not daughter is put at risk. Knifehand also had some vague history with his ninja clan, but that got brought up and resolved within two books with little more than a hand wave. Pun intended. Now, what really stands out in this book is the artwork. The line art in the first of the three stories was headed by John Mallon, with coloring by Brett R. Smith. While I don't think the artwork was as impressive in the second and third stories, the first had gorgeous sweeping landscapes and beautiful establishing shots. There was also good use of angle, shading, good detail in the characters and the foreground images, and the action shots were positively thrilling. If I were to grade this comic on the art alone, at least in the first book, it would easily get an A. That gets lowered to a B- if you include the other two stories, as the art did get progressively more lackluster. But good artwork does not a complete story make. While there are some good things within the book, the stories themselves are bumbling, misguided attempts at action movies. Elements are introduced with no lead-in, and many characters are written like we're supposed to know who they are already. Midway through the first story, this witch doctor guy is introduced. We've never seen him before, but the characters talk to him like they've been chatting all morning. Minor spoiler incoming, by the way. He then heroically sacrifices himself to give the Jawbreakers an edge in combat, but this was after knowing him for only a few pages. Not only do I not understand the type of magic he's using, nor do I have a scale to understand the level of sacrifice he's going for, 
I have no attachment to this guy. I have the same emotional investment in this character that I do random civilian number 57. I'm not even sure this guy had a name. And then there's also Zhaji, the informant who initially hired the jawbreakers to save her village from the giant ape attacking the jungle. While she started well enough as this imposing warrior, she was reduced to a third-rate romantic object who turned to putty in Kavs' arms. There was some forced love story between Zhaji and Kavs, which read like they were old lovers. If that had been the case, then my only complaint would have been the sappy dialogue. Instead, what could have been a powerful figure within the pages turned out to just be a red herring. Zhaji could have been an excellent character who fought and kept up with the guys, but she turns out to be a prize to be won. It also doesn't help that she wears clothes so skimpy that she only just barely avoids total nudity. Hell, her top is little more than a bib. There just needs to be a slight breeze and everyone gets a show. Despite being introduced as a warrior, lean, toned, and always carrying a spear, Zhaji existed to get the jawbreakers to the mission site and acts like weakly inserted sex appeal. But at least she wasn't stuffed into a refrigerator. But the stories themselves might be the worst part of this comic. The first two books are self-contained stories, with the third ending in a flat-lined cliffhanger. The second would be the best, since it's the most simple and straightforward, with the team breaking into a compound to kill a high-value individual and maybe rescue some local kids if they have the time. But the other two stories are meandering messes. Story twists are random, rampant, and jammed in with no room for development. Characters suddenly fall in line with these twists, though neither they nor the audience have had time to let things settle in naturally. The characters accept plot twists faster than Frank Castle loses his patience. Overall, Jawbreakers is meh. Some people might like it, but I'm not one of them. I'm not familiar with diversity in comics, but I do hope he does better with the next book. There is some potential here, but the writing is rough enough that it barely skirts away from a sleep aid on my grading scale. Here's to hoping he has more success with the sequel. So, have you read the book? What did you think? If not, do you want to read it now? Whatever your thoughts, comment below and stay tuned for more.